Here's how you make a baby through sex from the perspective of a chromosome. When mom makes an egg, her chromosomes double, divide, and then divide again. Some end up in the egg, the rest are discarded into much smaller polar bodies. Now we have an egg, it meets a sperm, and it's baby business time. Let's go back to the part where the mom's chromosomes separate. It's been a tenet that this process is random. This chromosome sometimes goes into the egg, sometimes into the polar body. Its homologue sometimes goes into the egg, sometimes into the polar body. Recent studies now suggest this sorting is not so random after all. Instead, there might be a selfish gene at work, preferentially dragging its home chromosome into the egg and causing its match to get thrown away more often. The element is actually the centromere, a stretch of DNA in the chromosome important for mechanically separating them during division. It's the anchor point for the spindle, the spot on the chromosome that gets pulled on by the machinery of the cell. It turns out there are strong centromeres and weak ones, and the strong ones get passed down preferentially. How is this a selfish gene? Well, centromeres are repetitive stretches of DNA. In fact, centromeric repeats are the most abundant non-coding elements in the human genome. Centromeres in preferentially inherited chromosomes in mice have been shown to be much bigger, and they recruit more proteins, which are used to hook onto the spindle. These are the strong centromeres, and they tend to end up pointing towards the egg end of the cell when it's dividing. But strong centromeres doesn't mean stronger attachment. Instead, they're more likely to let go of their spindle attachment if it's pulling them towards the polar body side, away from the egg to be side. Because this mechanism depends on tension between the two chromosomes, when the strong one lets go, the weak one has to let go too. It's like restarting a game if you're not winning. So eventually, with enough stops and starts, the strong centromere is reoriented, heading for the egg side and possible inheritance, and the weak side is heading to the polar body AKA the dumpster. How does the centromere know which way it's going? The thought is the stronger centromere listens in on a signal broadcast by the membrane that is intended to help the cell divide asymmetrically. But the selfish centromere takes advantage of the signal to recognize which way it's getting dragged. Why aren't we seeing bigger and bigger centromeres if they're being preferentially placed into the egg? It turns out that what's good for these genes might not be great for the egg or the body, making these strong centromeres truly selfish genes. When researchers have scanned the genome for rapidly evolving proteins, centromere binders, those that attach to the centromere for some reason, are among the fastest, possibly because the rest of the genome is fighting back against these selfish genes. So the question is, how selfish are your centromeres?